Have you ever wondered how the stock market actually works behind the scenes? And most importantly, how there are traders who are able to profit regardless of if a stock, if an asset goes up or down? If so, you're gonna love this video. So my name's Alex Monahan. if you're new to this channel. And I used to be a quantitative trader, a market maker at Susquehanna International Group, which is one of the top trading firms in the entire world, one of the most successful trading firms. So the purpose of this video is to break down market making for beginners. What is it? Why is it important? How can you use information from market makers to become a better retail trader? And also, I'm going to share with you some of my experiences in my time as a quantitative trader at Susquehanna International Group, some interesting anecdotes, some interesting stories. So basically, what is a market maker, right? As a market maker, you are not taking really directional bets. You're not betting on a stock to go up or down. You are merely setting prices on buying and selling a particular asset. And that asset could be a stock, a derivative like a call or a put. So a call or a put is just a bet on whether a stock is gonna go up or down. So if you're buying calls, you're essentially making bets that a stock is gonna go up a certain amount by a certain period in time. You also have market makers on you know, oil, natural gas, bonds, crypto, like Bitcoin. So there are tons of different market makers and the simplest example of a market maker, if you've watched some videos on my channel, would be a sports book, right? The sports book lets you buy and sell both teams. You can bet on either team. The sports book, like FanDuel, they're letting you bet on either the Cardinals or the Colts. You can bet on either team. So they're providing liquidity, these sports books, they're providing prices for both teams that you can bet on. And that's exactly what you're doing as a market maker is if you think a stock is worth $10, you think that's what it truly should be priced at. That's fair value. Then maybe your market would be $9.50. That's where you're willing to buy it. $10.50 is where you're willing to sell it. So you basically bake in a little spread around fair value. So as a market maker, you're not saying, hey, I think this particular asset, this stock, this bond is going to go up in price or down in price. You're merely setting lines for both buying and selling for other people to trade against. So a market maker just provides prices to buy and sell a particular asset and they make money from the spread between where they're buying and selling. So I'll give you a simple example. Let's say I'm a bond market maker. I think the bond is worth $1,000, but it's a little risky. It's a little bit of a risky bond, so I wanna bake in a bigger spread. Maybe I would make my market $900 bid, $1,100 offer, right? And I make money from the bid-ass spread, that $200 spread. The ideal thing for me, as a market maker, there is nothing better than just trading flat, right? Nothing would be better than someone sells me the bond at $900, that's where my bid is, that's where I'm buying it, and then I turn right around and I sell it for $1,100 and I make the $200 in profit. That's being a market maker, right? There's nothing better than trading flat. You get an equal amount of buy orders and sell orders and you just make your spread. And it's very similar to sports betting, right? So I love my sports betting analogies because I love gambling of all sorts, trading as well as sports betting. So you can see on FanDuel, the total for the Colts Cardinals game is 46 and a half, and you can bet the over or the under at minus 110 odds. So if you don't know sports betting, minus 110 means you have to bet $110 to profit 100. So let's just say as an example, you bet the over, for 110, so you're betting 110 on the over 46 half to win 100 in profit, and I bet the under for 110. If the game goes over, you're gonna profit 100, I lose 110. The sports book's up $10. If the game goes under, I make $100 in profit, you lose 110. The sports book makes $10 in profit. So regardless of what happens, if the game goes over or under, the sports book's just making $10, right? So as a sports book, they're sports betting market makers. They just want equal action coming in on the over and the under, as well as both sides of the spread. And then as a sports book, they just make their bid ass spread, which in sports betting is called the VIG. So obviously as a market maker though, it doesn't always work that way. You're not always trading flat. You're taking on significant risk. 
For example, let's go back to that bond. Let's say my market was 900 at 1.1K. I think the bond is worth $1,000. And everybody just keeps buying the bond from me at 1.1K, $1,100. So now I'm short the bond. If the price skyrockets, let's say that bond goes up to $2,000, I just sold a bunch at $1,100, I get screwed, I lose a ton of money. So as a market maker, life is very chill, very easy when markets are very boring and everything is just trading roughly flat. However, you are taking on considerable, considerable risk because you're still gonna have positions and if you're short an asset and it spikes in price, then you're gonna lose a lot of money. But to get back to the basics, what is a market maker versus a typical trader or a hedge fund, right? As a market maker, you are in general not taking directional bets. You are providing liquidity for everybody else in the market to take directional bets. So as a market maker, I'm not saying I think Facebook stock is gonna go up or down. I offer you prices to buy and sell. Whereas a retail trader or a hedge fund is just gonna say, we think Facebook is going down, we're gonna sell it, we're gonna short it, or we're gonna buy put options on Facebook. Put options are betting, essentially, on a stock to go down a certain amount within a certain period of time. So as a market maker, there's no directional bets, you are merely offering liquidity to the rest of the market. So one thing I wanted to cover briefly is, why do market makers matter, right? Wall Street gets such a bad rep, oh, they're so corrupt. But market makers really are the plumbers, the electricians of the entire financial system. They make everything work. They are the ones offering very competitive prices. So if a company or even you, right, if you wanna go into your retirement account and buy a stock or sell a stock, the reason you have such competitive prices, such tight markets is because of market makers, is because there's people who are, you know, setting lines essentially on the stock market and trying to make them as competitive as possible. So market makers really allow efficient markets, allow trading, and allow trading to have very tight prices. If you want to buy and sell stocks, usually you're trading those stocks with less than, you know, just a couple cent bid-ass spread. Very, very tight markets. And you can imagine if there were no market makers and you owned a stock, well, you're gonna have to go find someone. You're gonna have to go find a counterparty. If you wanna sell the stock, who's willing to buy it? And then you have to negotiate price. So market makers really make markets efficient and make everything just run smoothly. Of course they make money, right? It's a job like anything else, but their core to financial markets just working, working in an efficient way and working in a reasonable way where the costs, the bid-ass spreads aren't massive. So one thing I wanted to cover really briefly is what matters as a market maker. And the first thing is trading volume, right? So let's say your bid-ass spread for an asset is a dollar, but that asset gets no trading volume you're not making any money. So as a market maker, you wanna trade things that are popular where you can also be competitive because if you wanna trade Facebook stock options, everyone wants to be a market maker in Facebook stock options. Facebook's a super popular stock, so there's a lot of retail activity, people buying calls and puts on Facebook. So long story short, you also have to have very competitive prices. You have to have very tight markets. So as a market maker, Overall, you want more trading volume. So when I was a trader at Susquehanna, I traded derivatives on indexes. So what is an index? Like the NASDAQ, it's a group of, let's say, tech stocks. So the NASDAQ is Apple, Google, all these different tech stocks. And then you can make bets on the NASDAQ, this combination of tech stocks, going up or down. That's what an index derivatives trader is. You're trading derivatives on you know, the NASDAQ, Jets. Jets is an ETF where I traded derivatives on it, calls and puts. Jets is the airlines ETF. So the best trading for Jets was during COVID when markets were super volatile and everyone wanted to trade airlines, right? During COVID, people wanted to make bets that, oh, airlines are going to go down. They're going to go bankrupt. And then once the vaccine was released, people want to make all these bets on airlines going up. So typically as a market maker, you want volatile markets. You don't want crazy, horrible things to happen in the world, but company earnings reports, 
right? Like you want interesting things, presidential elections, because typically world events, crazy things happening in the world are what lead to trading activity. If there's nothing going on in the world, there's no product launches, there's no earnings, there's no elections, there's no, there's nothing going on, then there's not going to be much trading activity. There's not going to be much money to make as a market maker. The second thing as a market maker is you want to offer competitive prices so you actually win trades because as a market maker, best price wins. If someone calls you and you say, I'll sell it to you for 11 and someone else says, I'll sell it to you for 10, you're not going to win the trade. So you want to offer competitive prices, but not too competitive where you're constantly getting picked off left and right by hedge funds. Like if there's some super risky asset and you have a super narrow spread, you're just gonna get picked off by hedge funds like Bill Ackman and all these different things and you're gonna lose a ton of money. So you wanna have competitive prices, but not too competitive. And the final thing as a market maker is you wanna manage risk. As a market maker, there is no way to lose money if you're trading flat, right? If your bid ask spread is a dollar and you buy and sell an equal amount, you're just making that dollar bid ask spread. However, for example, during COVID, when I was a market maker on Jets, airline ETF, there were days airlines were going up or down 10% during COVID, crazy swings. So I could lose $10 million, $20 million. So I was constantly running models of, oh, if airlines go up 5%, what do I make or lose? What about 10%? What about 15%, right? Nobody knows the future especially with things like COVID and vaccines. So you constantly need to be analyzing risk and obviously aiming to trade flat. You can't bankrupt the firm, the company, the investment bank you work at based on your trading positions. You need to be analyzing your risk, the worst case situations and things like that consistently as a market maker. Markets are very dynamic. It's not static. You don't set your market, you know, 950 bid, 1050 offer all day long and just sit there on your hands. You're constantly adjusting your prices, your markets. So for example, the first and most obvious thing that affects your market is just trading volume. So let's say, for example, I go into work, I think, you know, a stock is worth $10 and my market is 950 at 1050. At first, maybe trading volumes roughly equal. I'm just making that a dollar uh, bid ass spread. But let's say it starts to pick up. Everyone starts buying from me 80% of the trading volume, then 90% of the trading volume. At some point, you have to think maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe I'm wrong thinking this is worth only $10. Maybe it's actually worth $10.75, which is why people are buying it from me at $10.50. So maybe I should change my market instead of being 950 at 1050 to 1025 at 1125. So you essentially change your fair value and then you have that reflected in your market. So one thing to mention is obviously there's natural points when people are just gonna wanna buy or sell more to close out positions, to start positions. So just because there's 80% you know, buying volume doesn't necessarily mean you have the wrong price. So one thing you wanna look out for is what I call toxic flow. So toxic flow basically means trades from informed counterparties, right? So you're gonna put a lot of weight into a trade from somebody really smart, right? Who's consistently beat you like a top hedge fund as a market maker. So let's just say someone calls the phone and is like, hey, yeah, I'll buy a thousand shares of that stock at 1050. It's a very different circumstance if that is Joe Schmo from E-Trade versus the smartest hedge fund in the world who basically beats you on their trades against you 80% of the time. You're gonna put a lot more weight into that order from that very smart counterparty. So that is one thing you're constantly looking out for as a trader is I was, as a market maker, I was constantly going through my previous trades and just eyeing like where are, where is informed money, these sharp hedge funds, where are they trading? Because I'm gonna put extra weight into their orders as opposed to everyday people respectfully on their Fidelity account. So that's one thing you have to be doing. Another thing that may affect your market is just news. So when I would get into work during COVID, a little story is the first thing I would do because trading airlines was super popular. It was also super profitable as a market maker. But what I would do is I would look on Reddit, right? And I would see, are airlines viral? or people people buying or selling? Because if I know everyone's gonna come and sell me a bunch of airline stock, 
maybe even if I think it's worth $10, maybe I say, eh, maybe it's worth $9.50 and I just open my market lower, right? I make my bids less aggressive because I know there's going to be a lot of volume coming in to sell it to me. So that's very important as a trader. The second thing that affects your markets is just what I call getting flat. So let's say you go into work and you truly believe a stock is worth $10, but you're really short it. So you sold a lot of it over the past few days and you want to buy it back so you don't have too much risk. Instead of making your market $9.50 at $10.50 with 50 cents on both sides, so for your bid ask spread, you think it's worth 10, you're saying, okay, $9.50 bid, $10.50 offer. Maybe you make it $9.95 bid. 1095 offer. So you're not competitive on the sell price. So if people want to buy it in the market, other people will take the order. But if people want to sell it, you have a very competitive price, right? So this is called shading your market. So another thing you're constantly doing as a market maker is you're tightening markets and you're widening them out. So if I'm a market maker at SIG, there's all these other market makers, Citadel, Goldman Sachs. So typically you wanna be a healthy percentage of the trading volume, right? If you're trading 100% of everything, typically that means your markets are too tight and you're taking on too much risk. Your markets aren't wide enough. Other people are saying, hey, we're not willing to trade this asset for that small of a bid-ass spread. So you're taking on all the trades, which typically isn't a good thing. That typically means you're very susceptible to being picked off because you're making trades without much of a profit margin. So you're at a big risk of being picked off. You don't wanna trade super risky assets with super narrow spreads. So you're constantly kind of determining, am I making any trades? Because sometimes maybe your markets are too wide. Maybe you think an asset is really risky, but if everyone, if you're 0% of the trading volume and every other company is making trades at much more competitive prices, maybe you're just too worried, right? Maybe you need to tighten up your market so you actually get in the game and actually make some trades as opposed to having these super wide markets and just being on the sidelines. So as markets get wide and not wide, you know, you're constantly kind of adjusting how wide do you want your market to be versus how tight do you want your market to be? So the last thing I figured I'd cover briefly is what makes a good market maker. Like if you want to work at a trading firm like Susquehanna, like Citadel, like Goldman Sachs, like Morgan Stanley, the investment banks, you obviously need to be somewhat good at math. You need to be technical. This is numbers driven. This isn't just you wake up and decide to buy random things. So you need to be technical. You need to be fast on your feet, right? When trades come in, you don't have four hours to sit there and run models and think about if you want to trade or not. If someone calls me and says, hey, do you want to buy this at $10? I don't have four hours to sit there on my computer and research it. You have to look at the numbers. You have to know your stuff well enough, know the other trades in the market so you can make a decision quickly. Because if you miss a really good trade and you say, eh, I'm not sure yet, give me some time. I mean, that person is just going to call someone else, that broker, and by the time you call them back to say, hey, I want the trade, it could be gone, right? So you need to be able to move fast. And you also should enjoy gambling, right? Like I love sports betting. Most traders, most market makers enjoy gambling. They enjoy the game, right? Every day is different. You're trying to get an edge in financial markets. Everyone is trying to beat you, trying to make money off your markets, trying to pick you off. So as a market maker, typically you enjoy gambling. You enjoy a fast paced environment. Some may call it stressful, but obviously fun. So in this video, we covered what is a market maker. They provide liquidity. They're kind of the electricians, the plumbers of the financial system, and they profit from the bid-ask spread, right? As a market maker in general, you're not taking directional bets. You're not just saying, hey, like a hedge fund, I think Apple is going to go to the moon. I want to buy a bunch of Apple. I want to buy a bunch of Apple calls. You're setting the lines. You are offering prices for people to buy and sell. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I obviously don't make a lot of videos from back in, you know, when I used to be a quant trader, but if people enjoy this type of content, I'll make more trading videos. Just let me know, guys. Have a great rest of your night.